Okay, ready? Breathe in. Ready? Breathe in. Okay. okay. And then, and then in your nose. You won't be able to sniff. Okay. I have never met somebody with larynx cancer, the most common type, that didn't smoke, ever. Ever, ever, ever. And that's just not my experience. That's a worldwide experience. Hope there's a tissue behind you. Can you give me one? Okay, that's the hardest part. Good. There is no question at all that tobacco smoke is the prime cause, the primary cause of cancer in your larynx. The entire covering of your throat and your voice box is at risk when you expose it to tobacco and some of its harmful, harmful chemicals. I think we were really shocked when the doctor told us that he had had that because his first reaction was, I don't smoke. I haven't smoked in a long time. And so even though somebody might quit, those damages um, aren't reversible anymore. And so some of those um, um, changes in you know, the, the mucous membrane don't uh, repair themselves and they just kind of lay dormant for a while. And as maybe somebody gets a little older or maybe some environmental exposures as well, all of a sudden it changes into some sort of different tissue that has a hard time controlling its own growth and its invasion into other places and spread to other portions of your body. And of course that's the definition of a cancer. I guess that's the hardest thing for him to accept is that it's something that you willingly do to yourself when you have the option not to. where that is. It, it's more than scary. It's just because it's real life. It's me, it's right there. It's not like you're looking at the TV and you can change the channel or turn the volume down. It's constant. You can't control it. That's, about, that's a good sign. That's about the right sign. You have to act differently around him. I, I have to sit there and it's hard to understand him. He could tell me to get him a glass of water. It'll take me five minutes. I, I could be in a rush to leave the house, tell him where I'm going. It'll take me 10 minutes to explain it to him. And you can't get mad. It's not his fault. I mean, it's his fault, but I mean, I can't get mad at him for that. I mean, it's not his fault he got cancer. It's his fault he smoked and got cancer. You know where to put it. You're going to put it on your neck to where you have your sweet spot, to where you have a little soft tissue. There you go. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it on when you want to make a sound. There you go. You got it. And you let up when you end the word. You don't keep it down because it'll make that humming noise. So you want to let it push it to make the beginning of the sound and let it up when you finish the sound. Okay. It's basically an open wound. And he's got to worry about something flying in it. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps it covered. Why, why would you do that? There would be times when he couldn't breathe, that he had to hurry up and help himself learn to breathe. He would be gasping for, for air. For whatever reasons, he chose to smoke because I guess he didn't know. But now people do know, and they know the seriousness of what can happen from smoking. And whether they choose to smoke or not to smoke is their choice. But that is what can happen. I mean, it's not something that even if you get cancer from smoking, that just you can get rid of. It's not like catching a cold and taking medicine. This almost becomes it's like his nose. And that when he first got sick, when he went to blow his nose, he would blow his nose like this, and then he realized it was coming out of here. And that he had to re retrain himself for that. He chose to do something that he thought was good to him, that pleasured him, but it wasn't. And I mean, now that people know that it's really not as good for you, I mean, it's not good for you at all. It's putting chemicals.